Good afternoon. My name is Blair Johnston and I am currently a junior at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania. As a dual major in geography and political science, I have an interest in the global impacts of climate change. Today I am going to discuss America's role in claiming the Arctic. Climate change has had a direct impact on the volume and extent of sea ice, especially during the past 40 years. Global climate change has been determined to be caused mainly by humans, particularly in the way they release fossil fuels into the atmosphere to produce energy. Within the next 100 years, society can expect to see more drastic environmental changes in which they should prepare for. These environmental changes will also have direct impacts in which the way societies interact with each other. In this first graphic comparison, we can see the diminishing extent of the sea ice due to rapid temperature incre increase between September 1979 and September 2015. On August 23, 2018, a large Russian cargo ship navigated the northern sea route for the first time with the assistance of a nuclear icebreaker. Previously, this has not ever been possible due to the thickness of the sea ice, however, warming waters now allows for properly equipped ships to break through the ice and begin to lead the way for trading through the polar region. How have states even been able to claim these territories in the North Pole? There is an international agreement that states only have a 200 nautical mile limit of sovereignty over the waters that extend from their continental shelf. However, this is also including islands. For example, Norway has claimed this little area here right next to where Denmark has made its claims. This is because of the Svalbard Islands. Without these islands and having sovereignty over these islands, Norway would have no way to be able to compete in this race. For the United States, the only way they have, have the ability to be able to claim in the Arctic is due to the tip of Alaska within the Arctic Circle. This triangle depicts the exact location where the United States has currently staked its claim. Be aware that it is right next to where Russia has staked its claim. It's going to cause extreme discrepancies of power within the next few years. Here's another depiction of the discrepancy in the territory claims within the Arctic. There is extreme discrepancy between which nations have claimed what territory because their 200 nautical mile limits all overlap as the longitudinal, longitudinal lines of the Earth converge at the North Pole. As you can see, Denmark's claims overlap with Russia, Canada, the United States, and Norway, and there's also some free area in which no one has yet staked their claims. This 3D image here is meant to depict the difference between the continental shelves and the Arctic Territory. The territory that everyone is scrambling for is not even actually land, but just claims to the waters a small mountain range under the water and what is under the bottom of the ocean itself. It seems like a desolate area, but there's actually much here to be There are tremendous resources under the water that would not only benefit the nation, but are considered material elements of power. According to the USGS, or United States Geological Survey, up to 25% of all oil and gas reserves are under the Arctic Ocean. This would require drilling under the sea. Additionally, there are extreme monumental economic benefits. Some trading routes would be, sl routes would be slashed in half. Instead of shipping across the Atlantic or Pacific, the United States would simply ship across the top of the globe. If the United States does not put their foot in the door and claim these resources and territory, other states will. This will increase others' material power while decreasing the United States' material power by comparison. Remember, the only reason the United States is justifiably in this race is due to the tip of Alaska being in the Arctic Circle. As per the history of the Arctic Circle and the North Pole, there is not much of a history. Unlike many places around the globe, there is no dynasty or colonies that took root in the North Pole. Expeditions began in the 1900s, when a team from America reached the North Pole on April 6, 1909. Expedition leader Robert Peary claimed the region in name of the United States, but it went unrecognized by other sovereignties. In response, Canada claimed the region in 1925 with a law, which also went unrecognized by other states. As an act of recent dominance, Russia placed a flag at the bottom of the ocean where the North Pole is in 2007. As you may now understand, the United States is at a serious disadvantage in this geopolitical race. It is quite interesting to see 
how modern globalization and technology interact when new land or water is involved to be claimed. Well, the United States did not have a lot of land to begin with within the polar region, so they have no major ports, facilities, technology, a big population, or drastic or intelligent military bases in this location. So there is no strategic advantage. It is also very important to note that America does not have a fleet of icebreakers. Russia's icebreakers number in the dozen, while the United States has approximately three. An icebreaker just breaks the ice in front of cargo ships so that they can create new shipping routes. To exemplify a visual comparison, marked here in red is where Russia has, or is intending to, place military influence within their nation. Climate change has allowed for permanent residence in these northern territories, and including these northern islands. Additionally, Russia picture for new polar ports pictured at these four major locations. The only way the United States is going to be a player in this game is through a multilateral approach. There is an international organization called the Arctic Council which is meant to solve disputes in the polar region regarding politics and the environment, and the United States just gained a two-year council seat in 2018. The United Nations is also a mediator in this game, and they solve continental shelf disputes. In order for proper claims to be recognized, the nation must submit proof of the extension of the continental shelf so that the 200 nautical mile limit can be recognized legally. Unlike countries such as Russia, Norway, Canada, and Denmark, the United States has not completed this legal paperwork because Washington has not yet ratified for its completion. The United States also has a tight partnership with Canada, as we are both responsible for detecting and halting invaders from the North in a pact called the North Warning System. It is important for both nations to work together, and this surveillance is a way for the United States to get its foot in the door and surveillance over the polar region. The future outlook does not entirely look successful, for the United States is extremely far behind Russia. Russia has the most population and land within the Arctic Circle and out of any other nations within the Arctic Council. They have been dedicating resources and attention to this geopolitical race. The key word here is attention because many Americans are not even aware that the race is occurring and it is not an extremely hot topic in Congress right now. If the United States fails with this current multilateral peaceful approach, it could turn into a drastic power dis dispute between the United States and Russia or a decline in power for the United States ultimately.